<laughs> yeah, here we go. Good morning, Carpe Diem. Seize the day, everybody. I'm Lisa Dublin, and this is Lisa Dublin Live. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm continuing to interview my guests, my presenters for the To All The Girls Conference 2020 happening on the 31st of October. And I have here with me a very dear friend, Dr. Nadine Collins. Nadine, yes. I got to, how's Mexico, girl? Girl, it is amazing. It's like being in heaven. Come join it's me. It's like being back yeah. in San Luisa. Come join me, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Hair stuck in the snow. It's snowing over by me already. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm -mm. how are you doing you one bit i'm blessed <laughs> highly favored and flavored just thankful to be alive <laughs> uh -huh. and um so i wanted to i know we don't have much time and you're going to be talking about purpose and you know there's a saying that um well i'm 40 i'm going to be 45 soon mm -hmm. and some people of my age and even older always say you know i'm this age and i still don't know what i want to do with my life i'm sure you hear that a lot with your clients so mm -hmm. i want to begin first by telling our audience can you begin by telling us a little bit about yourself and what you do which is awesome and which is so pink <laughs> are you funny about that pink stuff i know i love it so love it. I am I'm a Christian and um, the work that I've, um, the Lord has called me to do really at this phase in my life is to really empower Christian women to know what their true purpose is and to build successful lives around it. Because so many Christian women have been, and I'm sure many women could identify with the same thing, that they have been going through life, just as you said, and they are growing in age, but they're not feeling that level of contentment, of peace. You know, they're not feeling fulfillment because they have not understood yet what they're meant to do in this life. And for me, every single one of us have been brought into this world for a specific purpose. And that goes deeply into my um, um, spiritual beliefs where, where, you know, the Bible speaks about us being born, you know, and having that appointed thing that God has set us apart to do. And that plan is to prosper us. And so two of my favorite texts that really helps align the belief that I have that every single one of us and as we speak to women specifically in the to all the girls conference it's yes. really understanding that every single one of us girls have been brought here for a specific reason and we cannot continue going through life without understanding what that true purpose is because mm -hmm. when you're doing it you will be getting you will be able to feel fulfilled because you know okay this is my place this is what i'm supposed to do and this is important for us understanding what that true purpose is is because if we don't understand what that true purpose is, sometimes we go through life hating on other women who are living in their true purpose, who are doing what they're called to do, what they're meant to do. And we are so dissatisfied with within our own selves that okay. sometimes we have attitudes and we, we do not support other women when they're thriving and when they're doing what they're called to do, thinking as if, you know, these women are affecting us, not understanding that, hey, she has her purpose and so do you. And right. you need to spend time seeking that out. What am I okay. meant to do? Right. So I guess the obvious question is, how do you find out what you're meant to do? How do you know, one, if you're in your calling, right? Mm -hmm. And um, how do you find out what you were called to do if you're not? I, we don't want to give like all the details, whatever. We don't have much time, but you know, just give us some tips. Like, how do you know? Is it that it's easy for you to do? You enjoy doing it? I know, like, I feel that way when I'm speaking, like I could speak for the entire day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The irony is our purpose are sometimes aligned with our gifts, the natural gifts that we have. And sometimes it may not be because the easy way out is just to think, okay, my purpose is for me to do this thing that I'm good at. But wow. sometimes the call may come in an area where you're not good at it, where you're not trained, something that will push you outside of your comfort zone. You know, and a, for a lot of women, sometimes the call comes outside of their comfort zone. No it's wonder a lot of us prefer to be, <laughs> no wonder a lot of us prefer to just be comfortable. Mm -hmm. as opposed to walking in your calling yeah right it's easier to to do what you do best but when you're walking in your purpose it may stretch you it will put you outside of maybe your area of training the area that you want to do and that's why it's for the women who are fearless the women who 
are really determined to do what God has called them to do, regardless of how uncomfortable they feel. And I believe, and the more I interact with women, as I work with women one-on-one -on -one in my coaching and so on, it comes up all the time. The majority of the time, it's outside of that, that, that thing. Even for me, I mean, typical example, I mean, I'm an educator, you know, um, that's what I do and everything like that. But God called me to do something that I was never trained for you know, as an international speaker, women's empowerment coach and so on, doing things that I did not study at undergrad masters or PhD levels. And he called me into that. I was totally uncomfortable. It was not something that I thought that I was prepared for. I'm like, how am I going to do this thing? You know, the calls are coming. Okay. I'm not comfortable. I remember the times when I wasn't even comfortable being filmed yeah, I remember I first saw you on 3ABN. Yeah. And I was listen, I was so happy to just hear a St. Lucian accent <laughs> on that platform. So right. I went searching for you on LinkedIn. I was like, hey Nadine. Yes, hi, St. Lucian. I, I just watched you on, on 3ABN. And you know, we had a like we we're still friends. So, you know, it, it's good that it it stretched you because it reached people like me who might not have been able to reach you and be in contact with you. So I so get you about that. Yeah. So I see you do lots of coaching. You're always traveling all over the world, speaking at women's conferences, and you've gone virtual now um, because of COVID, et cetera. Um, so how is it being in your calling? Let, let's end on that note, yeah. um, because I know you perhaps some people might be scared, saying, oh my gosh, it's better to just be comfortable. But if you are in your calling, what can you expect? To be quite honest, when you live in your calling, in your purpose and so on, there is that level of satisfaction that I am doing what I'm meant to do. I am not living the life of an imposter. This is my real life. I'm not trying to be anybody else. I'm not trying to be like anybody else. I just want to be me. And being me means I am operating at the level of the capacity that God has called me to operate at. And so it gives you that level of fulfillment knowing that you are doing what you were meant to do, that if you die tomorrow, you would have done what you were supposed to do. And because made an I, impact, right? Yes, a lot of us, um, you know, people, I mean, our parents, grandparents, and so on have gone through life and on their dying beds die with regret. A woman who's living in her purpose will not die with regret because she knows I did what I was supposed to do. I left my impact. I left a legacy. I did what I was supposed to do. I not just live life my way, but I lived it the way that God intended for me to live it so that I can have the impact. So the thing is, the truth is, we can have an impact even when we operate outside of our calling. We can have an impact when we have a, sometimes we have this great job, et cetera. But what happens is there's a dissatisfaction on the inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is what the woman wants to find in terms of her purpose. So yes, you may have a big job. Yes, you may be making the money, but, but do you go to bed every day feeling like, oh my gosh, I just wish I could continue doing this job for the rest of my life. Or do you do it and think I'm doing it to pay the bills, but you have this level of discomfort inside because you're like, this is paying the bills, but I'm not happy doing it. I'm not feeling fulfilled doing it. I'm not feeling like I'm having the impact I'm supposed to have because you know it, you feel it on the inside of you. So that's the difference between being successful or just being successful and being and living in your calling. And your calling can also grant you great success because the Bible says your gifts will make room for you. I and love so you that verse. operating in your gifts and you're operating in your purpose, it will make room for the success as well. So you get, you get to kill two birds with one stone essentially. Yeah, for sure. Wow, this is this is very interesting. I can hardly wait to hear more. I think people coming to the conference will get some tips, some tools for yes. discovering, first of all, whether you are in your calling and the way forward. Um, mm -hmm. Nadine has a very busy schedule and lots of um, clients and so on. So we're very happy to have her presenting at To All The Girls 2020 on the 31st of October. Please go sign up. Um, it, this is so interesting. I, I love that you said a man's gift will make room for him and bring him before kings. I, <laughs> I love that. I love that. But some people say that the gift there refers to like a monetary thing. But I think, no, it doesn't, right? I think there's also a level in which it is about the thing that you're good of will make a room for you. And we want to find out it's more something about that. that you were born with. You oh know, God, because God. the gift will make room for you cannot be a financial thing. It's something that's in you that when you operate within that sphere, you will stand before kings. You will do great things because you are operating in the area for which you were brought here. You are doing the thing that you were brought here to do. 
Yeah, it's like we are all in an assignment. And until you find out what that assignment is, you may be doing well in life, but you're not operating at your best. Yeah. And we want to, all the girls, operate at our very best because we have to do our part to make a difference in this world. For sure. And then, you know, the other part of that verse that you were just speaking about, like a man's get to make room for him um, and bring him before kings. There's another one that says... um. Do you see a man diligent in his work? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. That's Proverbs 22, 29. That's one of my favorite texts. It is. Like the mean men part is what I find like very, is very interesting. Yeah. Because sometimes you find people with outstanding talents and uh-huh. gifting, but they're in environments where they are not appreciated. Mm-hmm. Mean men. <laughs> yeah. So say yeah. if you are diligent and that text speaks to not purpose specifically but diligent in whatever you are doing Mm -hmm. so um, if you if you do what you are doing diligently we may not always be in our place of purpose yet however we have a responsibility to do the best at what we are doing Mm -hmm. because if we're not doing the best it's like if i have this job and it's not my dream job i am supposed to act like this job is my dream job because it's going to open the way for me to get my dream job Oh, I, I remember that. when I worked at the Bank of St. Lucia, mm-hmm. our um, HR manager went into courts in St. Lucia and saw this young lady, well-dressed, and she attended to him there. Because of how she was operating, he offered her a job at the Bank of St. Lucia. So he wow. said, the principle is dress for the job you want to have, act like you have the job you want to have, because you will come into contact with kings who will see your behavior and say, you know what, you belong to somewhere better. Yeah. So we have a responsibility as Christians, apart from purpose, we're talking about that diligence is doing our best, whatever your hands find to do, the Bible says, do it with all your might. We cannot do things in a shoddy way as Christians, because we are not going to rise and be before kings, because we have not proven that we can be trusted in the little. And that's why he said, if you are faithful in little, then I will trust you with much. Mm-hmm. So this thing can just spiral and spiral into so many other areas yes, of blessings. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to just put up the fire emoji now, right? Girl, this, this is awesome. This is awesome. There, there's so many people who just want to discover purpose and to, you know, to walk in that blessing and to walk in that sense of purpose and knowing that you're doing what you were called to do. Yeah, yeah. fire emoji, everybody. <laughs> so looking forward, Nadine, to hosting you and to hearing what you have to say on the 31st of October. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's just going to be wonderful. So thank you so much. Any parting words? Now, I just want to tell the ladies, register, come out, all of the girls, let's have a powerful time, let's empower each other so that we can end 2020 on the highest note ever, so we go into the new year, fired up to live in our true purpose. Great, looking forward to it. Okay, see you, enjoy Mexico for all of us. <laughs> I yeah. will, and I am, and I shall. <laughs> I didn't even need to remind you, right? <laughs> Guys, you see, I told you, I have some awesome friends, don't I? <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye, bye. See you. Bye-bye.